see now the voltage control of the wind turbine. So let's start our machine with uh, 6 megawatt of active power production. This uh, rotational speed, of course, needs to be set in order to have a flat start. And the reactive power production equal to zero bar. So no uh, reactive power production whatsoever. So that's the situation that we have in the, in the grid. Values are set here in the load flow page. I'm using the model with uh, resistances, reactances, and capacitances in the, in the line. So the active power that uh, the load is consuming will be uh, provided by the generator, by the wind turbine, plus, of course, the losses in the, in the system. So at this point, we can run a, a dynamic simulation without any kind of event, just to verify that uh, the states are reasonably flat. So we perform our simulation. We see that uh, active power is kept at 6 megawatt, reactive power is kept at 0 megawatt, rotational speed is constant, uh, uh, at least within the fifth decimal. So everything is going to be all right. You can see here there are tiny variations of reactive power, but again, we are in the range of the fifth decimal. So that's not really a variation as such. So at this point, uh, let's make a small change in our grid. So let's send uh, the conventional unit uh, set point at 10 seconds at uh, 1.05 uh, volt and let's run again the simulation for 10 seconds so we get this voltage here we reinitialize the situation is similar as before but you will uh, notice that uh, since the voltage got a bit higher uh, then we have uh, more production in terms of capacitance uh, in terms of capacity effect from the line that means that our generator needs to uh, consume a bit more uh, reactive power to keep the voltage under control. Just to remember again how was the situation before. You see that the reactive power from the generator was a little bit uh, less. Right, let's run our 10 second simulation. And then we see that at the end of the simulation, uh, the wind turbine actually is consuming also uh, 2.3 megavar. So it's not zero megavar anymore. Why is that? So we need to uh, look closer at uh, the voltage uh, results of the wind turbine. And then we can see that uh, if we zoom here at the very beginning of the simulation, we realize that uh, the reactive power consumed by the machine is a zero as it's supposed to be, because that's a load flow value. But then it suddenly increases. And it increases according to the dynamic voltage controller that is uh, present inside the wind turbine. So within a few tens, um, hundreds of milliseconds, the, um, the voltage, the reactive power gets closer to 0.33. Uh, in per unit. So where is this value coming from? This value is coming from uh, this characteristic that you find here under the curve Q, UP. Uh, under advanced two, you see that uh, this lookup table is uh, setting the generator to produce according to the measure voltage and according to the measure active power production, a certain amount of reactive power. So since we are 105 with a react active power that is somewhere in between, between here and here, then uh, the reactive power set is a linear interpolation between these two uh, values. So this is quite important because that means that uh, uh, it's important to be aware that one thing is the voltage or the reactive power value that we set in the load flow page of the generator. The other thing is what's going to happen during the dynamic simulation because of dynamic controllers active. If we, of course, take out of service this uh, voltage controller and we rerun the simulation, we will observe that no one is going to change the reactive power value of the wind turbine. So the zero megawatt at the very beginning of the simulation are maintained throughout the RMS.
So what do we want to do in such a case, in case we, of course, want to keep this uh, voltage characteristic on, right? Because that's something uh, uh, most wind turbines nowadays, they have to produce, and we need to analyze this feature properly in power factory in order to get a proper uh, dynamic initialization. So we need to uh, basically reinitialize, uh, set the active power, the reactive power value according to the steady state value that we will obtain at the end of the simulation. So you remember that we achieved this minus 2.3 megawatt. So we're going to reset this value in the load flow page of the generator. We initialize, we verify that the generator is producing or actually consuming this 2.3 megawatt. We reperform the simulation. And we can see that we obtain a much more uh, uh, satisfying uh, curve. So you can see here that uh, the reactive power is actually constant. Again, we have variation on the fifth decimal, so that's, uh, that's acceptable, definitely. And you see here uh, active and reactive power on the other uh, page. So at this point, uh, we uh, properly scaled the initial value so that it makes sense with the dynamic set point that is uh, with the characteristic of the dynamic voltage control that is present uh, right now. Uh, one option that uh, in such a case, I mean, whenever you have uh, um, multiple units in the system, it's always uh, you need to be careful in order to make sure that the voltage control action is uh, shared uh, properly. I just want to, to make a small uh, uh, variation in the, in the grid just to give a nice example as well. So if we do not consider this uh, line with the capacitance, but we just consider the line that is purely reactive, we would end up uh, in uh, such a situation that we don't have this capacitive effect that is helping to sustain the voltage. So if we want to keep the voltage at 105, we would end up uh, in a situation that uh, the generator needs to be uh, overexcited in order to produce, in this case, 14.8 megavar to keep the voltage at 105. But you can see that uh, since we want to have a flat start from our wind turbine generator, then uh, the generator the wind turbine is set to consume 2.3 megawatt. So in this case, you can see that uh, from a dynamic point of view, uh, the system is fine because, let's say, the states in our uh, grid, in our generator are fine, but definitely the load flow, uh, so let's say the dispatch, is not very nice because we have uh, this awkward situation where 2.3 megawatt are just recirculated on this bus uh, from the generator from the conventional generator to the wind turbine generator. So in this case, we would need to be careful to properly coordinate the, the two machines. Let's just go back to the uh, original case where we had the line uh, with the capacitance. And we are in this situation. So in this case, without, uh, let's say, getting the, to the extreme case where we have one machine that is uh, overexcited, the other that is underexcited, we are still in a situation that we have two machines of different size. This one is a 600 MVA and this one is a 7 MVA that would need to uh, share in a fairly proportional uh, way the, um, the loading in terms of reactive power. So how do we do that? We uh, reuse what we analyzed at the very beginning of the course, which is the station control. So we take back our uh, station control into the game. We equip actually the station control in both machines. And you can see now that uh, the, um, we have both machines in here. We may want to uh, decide different type of uh, load sharing between the two machines, but let's say the one of the most reasonable solution would just be to divide uh, the necessary reactive power according to the nominal rating of uh, each machine. So in this case, uh, uh, let's remember that all the settings that will be set here will be um, override by the, um, will be overwritten by the, um, by the voltage, by the station control. So what we get now is that uh, 
uh, basically it's doing the job all the it's just a conventional generator which is of course is the largest of the two uh, that is doing all the job again we want to reperform our dynamic simulation and see that everything is working fine and again we end up in this uh, situation that the wind turbine generator consume 2.3 megawatt because again it's a case of the uh, local voltage controller uh, dynamic controller of the uh, wind turbine that is taking over during the dynamic simulation so also in this case we need to remember that uh, uh, either the reactive power set or the reactive power set by the station control uh, they are both properties of the load flow so they will apply just at the load flow then throughout the dynamic simulation uh, local controllers will just take over uh, the role so if we want to make a proper uh, uh, distribution then we would need to adjust the characteristic also of the uh, dynamic voltage control that we have in our uh, wind turbine so one possibility for this specific dispatch would be to say okay i don't want to have uh, uh, i want to have my wind turbine uh, let's say not to produce any reactive power until the voltage is 105 and then I would like to start producing when it's 106 and so on. So in this case, we rerun the simulation. And we see that uh, we have again, uh, um, not here, this one here. We have again a flat start in terms of uh, uh, reactive power. So you see here, the, in this case, the difference is just on the fourth decimal. So there is just a small dynamic that we can uh, uh, easily accept. So the kind of operation that we did uh, right now uh, was just a kind of secondary controller uh, done manually in this case. That just changed the characteristic of this uh, lookup table here. So we just shifted the dead band so that we had um, no reactive power production until this voltage value. Of course, if we want to make a different kind of uh, control action or make uh, the dead band smaller, then uh, these values can be changed and we can uh, get the desired control characteristic. And that's uh, pretty much about uh, this example.